Hey guys, it's Sam here. We've noticed that there has been a serious increase in the number of crypto and NFT based scams and hacks right now out there. So we're just going to be reiterating some of the content we've done in our hour long cybersecurity masterclass, which can be found on the Hydrowells Mining Club YouTube channel. So this is going to be a few minutes just going through some of the core basics you should follow to protect yourself. So first, don't show off how much you hold. It's going to make you a target and you honestly don't want that because people will try for months and months to, to kind of empty that crypto wallet you've got. If you've been showing off, you know, you've got X number of NFTs, you've got $50,000 worth of crypto. It's not worth the risk. Use antivirus software, just general security best practices anyway, similar to using a password manager. They're both really good things to use. Um, this is just going to protect you not just in the crypto space, but just in real life and generally in any other space or anything else you do, protect yourself with those two things. Don't let FOMO guide you. FOMO is a huge lead, a huge kind of point that these scams and hacks push on. They're always trying to get you to think, you know what? Oh crap, I'm going to miss out on this NFT minting right now or this great deal you need to get in right now. But just take a step back, think about it um, and just, could double check the URLs, check them again, check them again and check them again it is so key. Just make sure, okay, is this an official link? Yes, okay. Does it still sound fishy? Is it a stealth mint? These stealth mints are, you know, they, they're quite high risk because more often than not, they are some form of scam. So I would stay clear of them and because most people won't really be looking to drop stealth mints, especially established project, projects already. They're not just going to drop a stealth project it is not good for security practice. So just be careful when you're feeling that FOMO kind of feeling, just double check everything and make sure it feels right again. Uh, turn your server DMs off on Discord because this reduces your exposure to scammers massively. So I mean, they'll have bots in almost every Discord server and they'll just be mass spamming every single person that joins. And even when you've been joined for a while, just, hey, targeting the server specifically as well. They do tailored messages. So just turn them off. It just reduces your exposure massively. Um, use MFA, um, just a general security practice there as well. Don't store the majority of your funds in exchanges. Those exchanges have their own wallet. It's not your wallet. Not all exchanges are insured as well. Um, they may be insured, but not up to the full coverage of what they're storing. So it's always best to store a majority of funds in a hardware wallet. So it's essentially like creating a, a vault for your NFTs and crypto with one. And use a VPN as well. It's just general best practices uh, for keeping yourself secure. Now we have two main types of crypto wallets. So we have hot wallets and cold wallets. So a hot wallet would be something like a web-based one, like MetaMask. You can have it on your phone. You can have it on your laptop. Normally easy, pretty easy to use and free typically as well. Um, and then you have cold wallets. So these are, I'd say you, you do always want to keep these offline. You don't want to connect these directly to the internet. Um, they're useful for storing large amounts of cryptos and NFTs. It is like your, your vault essentially less convenient. And obviously you do need to buy them, but it's ideal for protecting yourself in the crypto space. Now we have a few key processes for when you're doing your minting. First off, avoid FOMO. Two, you want to use a hot wallet to mint your NFTs. So send funds to your hot wallet from a storage wallet, preferably uh, a cold wallet, uh, by that I mean a hard wallet, then use that hot wallet to connect to the minting site, double check the URL again, then after using that hot wallet to mint, transfer your NFTs and any remaining funds back to your storage wallet. So this way, even if you minted on a dodgy website, uh, they only have access to your hot wallet, which has minimal value in it. It's whatever you put into mint and you might even be able to transfer out before they do anything. So that's the ideal way of doing it. You don't want to use a cold wallet or a hard wallet to mint from because that's essentially giving the hackers direct access to your vault of your crypto and NFTs. Now, a really important side note is you can still mint with hardware wallets, but I'd always recommend using a hot wallet and transfer funds from that hard wallet. However, if you do use your ledger to mint through MetaMask or any other hard wallet, remove all connections instantly. And this still can't guarantee safety because some some smart contracts that are malicious, they will instantly drain that wallet as soon as you press sign it and accept. Minting directly through your hard wallet just opens your vault to criminals. Um, this is just a quick few minutes. So if you want to go in a bit more depth, check out the cybersecurity masterclass on the Hydrowells Mining Club YouTube channel. And I'm always here if anyone's got any security questions.